Hello to all my friends here. I am Suki the Brown Eyed Stitcher. I am here for floss tube number 30, which is also my one and a half years on floss tube video, which means it's time for another whip parade. I am about three weeks behind on this video. I got like a cold and cough thing and whenever I get a cough it does linger around for about three weeks before it goes away and I did not want to film a whip parade while trying to suppress a cough and manage that so I just waited until it was all gone which was actually last week but then I had a dance recital last weekend and filming was not a thing happening that week so here we are uh May 31st, 2023, and whip parade. Yay! My one year whip parade was like two and a half hours long. So we'll see what this one turns out to be. Will I get really chatty or will I be very streamlined? Am I ever streamlined, y'all? Ever? Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for your support. However long you've been here, if you've been here from the very beginning, one and a half years ago, you are amazing. If you are here now, you are just as amazing. This is, I just think of this as my little corner of the little stitchy world. And um, well, it's not really a little stitchy world. Like we are all over the place and it's fantastic and amazing. And I love it so much. And I am, like so honored that you're here with me today or any other day. So let's get started. <laughs> um, I will be showing my projects in chronological order according to start date. Except my first three projects, I'm going to show my fostered projects first. Um, I suppose I could have put them in order of like, this is when I received the fostered project, but I didn't. So here we go. Um, my finishes will also be scattered in according to their start date. And let's see how this goes, okay? So my first project is no smoking by Randall Spangler, or artwork by Randall Spangler, but chartered by Heaven and Earth Design. This I'm fostered from Kaylin, my daughter. She started up here, and then um, we still really want to see this finished, but she has been working on other crafts and other um, interests. She's been deep diving into the k-pop world she has for a very very long time so this isn't new but she's it's just fascinating what she's getting into um in in how she is thinking about the the k-pop world not just the songs but she's getting into the culture and the nuances of everything and I both want to explain all the things, but also this isn't really the format, but anyway, it's been super fun to watch her delve into a lot of the issues that come up because of the industry and also see the trends and um, where the industry is going and how the groups and the, the companies that are in charge of those groups, like how they all work together or don't work together and delving into topics like bullying, cyberbullying, the differences between the K fans versus the international fans, um, the minors in the industry, the expectation. It's just, it's great. Anyway, this is, um, <laughs> No smoking. This is on 
25 count, easy count. It is stitched um, two strands over one fabric thread, so two over one, tent stitch. I took everything out of Q-snaps and hoops so you can see the full thing. Um, we're popping up before pictures over here. Uh, the before pictures are from my one year. So this is the progress in six months, <laughs> which is not to say very much. Um, this project got 790 stitches in the last six months for not even a 1% increase. It's 0.92% increase. So it's currently at 5.27%. Um, I know when I worked, I mostly worked up in here when I started, when I got this from her. But it's not a very big one. It's really, it's like 80,000, 86,000 stitches. And will be adorable when finished. Next fostered project is a stamped kit by Alara, or from Alara. Uh, if you don't know Alara yet, you're very new to my channel. Um, <laughs> Alara is my my bestie. She and I, she's the one who encouraged me to start floss too. The very first person who encouraged me, and we fast became friends and been fantastic. So uh, check her out if you have not yet. Anyway, this is a stamped kit. I wanted a stamped kit from for the holiday season knowing that it tends to get very very busy for me and my brain kind of goes kaput and there were going to be times when I wanted my hands busy but I needed my brain to uh, not work because it wouldn't work. You know what I mean? But stamped kits are challenging because so many of them are unlicensed works and that's hard. But I knew Alara had some and I asked if she had any that she was willing to let me borrow. So I'm fostering this one from her. Um, on my last video, however, I asked um, if anybody knew what company it was that is doing licensed stamped cross stitch and so many of you responded and it was so good that the website has been up on my phone ever since then um, but I have to actually decide which one to buy but I really really want to support them it's called Aura Loa we will pop that up here on the screen for anybody else looking they are a diamond painting kit first but they are starting to um, work with their artists to make stamped kits as well. So I'm excited to be able to have the option for stamped kits of licensed work, work that the artists are getting um, credit for and paid for. So this is not one of those kits, but I'm excited for this as an option. Okay, so this is the one that I have from Alara. It's um, Underwater World. I'm not actually sure if I've ever shown the what what the art's going to be. <laughs> um, I think I've only ever shown just what I've done on it. So I'll show you the front first. All of that is the stamping, and here's the back. And you're going to have to ignore the stamping down here so you can see this up here. That is what I've done. You can see a little bit here and there. There are some random stitches down here somewhere, but you won't be able to tell them. It was just like I needed to finish out a thread I was working on, so I found another place. So now you can see it's all up here, this white and this purple into the blue, the yellow. I've got, um, right in here, do you see that? I'm touching, 
I'm touching it. It's so exciting. So I pull this out, especially when I'm going somewhere. Um, if I'm going to be staying at a doctor's office or my daughter's the one doing the shopping, <laughs> like at a clothing store or makeup or whatever it is that we're doing. Um, if she's going to be browsing and I am not going to be browsing, I bring this with me. Um, sometimes I'll bring it to other places if, depending on where my brain is at, if if I'm not overloaded, then I'll grab something different. But if I'm, if I know I'm feeling overloaded, this is the one I grab. It fits very nicely in this bag, which is just a, it's a book, a book bag, I think is what they're called. I got it off Amazon. I have two of them and it fits super well in my um, backpack purse. And I keep, um, the threads and this and I don't have it with me but I have a little um, pouch where I can keep the threads and my scissors in um, that fits right in there if it's not in here I wonder where it is oh it's probably in my other travel one that I'll take anyway that's foster project number two foster project number Three. This is also from Alara. I do not have a cover photo, but you don't need one because all the stitching is done. What I am doing is the back stitching and couching. I'm finishing it for her. She already did a lot of it. Um, so I like back stitching. I've never done couching, but I will learn and do it. Um, but backstitching makes Alara sweat, especially on Dimensions kits. <laughs> and so I, I'm, I'm doing it for her. She already did a lot of it. I've done uh, mostly, mostly stuff in the blue right around here. Um, and down, down here in the green, I did, I've done some of that stuff too. So I'm working on that. My deadline to finish this is like November. So I have like 150 days. <laughs> Alara, why is it so long until I see you again? This is, I think it's called the Sorceress. I, I could be wrong. It's a Dimensions kit. I don't know if I have any of that information, honestly. Let me find out for you. It's from Dimensions Charts and Charms Alluring Sorceress. That's what it's called. Alluring Sorceress. I don't have it. 1997. Like I said, I don't have a finish for you. I am not doing any of the charms, just um, Alara will do the finishing touches, but it uses uh, Krynek as a blending filament mostly, and so it goes, um, it's very sparkly, you can't, you probably can't, you might be able to see the sparkle, but it's like in here with the thread, the DMC thread, uh, so it's a little bit of a pain to work with, but not, not too terrible. That's all my fostered projects. I do have one that I was considering. It's not really fostering, but it's not going to be staying with me when it's finished. But it's, it's in the rest of the mix. I'm counting it as not a fostered project. Because technically it's not. I'm stitching the entire thing. Okay, so now we're going to get on to mm, the rest of my whips. I mean, just my whips, because I don't have to count these as whips because they're fostered, right? Um, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So I have three foster projects and 26 other projects, plus I think there's eight or nine finishes in here. 
um, to show. So we've got, we've got a bit to work through. But I will say, in the last, it's been almost seven months, because I'm behind, that's okay. It's better than coughing throughout the entire video. So, in the, in the seven months since my one year whip parade, I finished nine, wait, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I finished nine projects and I started eight projects, but one of those was a start and a finish. So, um, so I still finished more than I started. Yes. Okay. Um, that's where I was going with all of that. You know, I go through these modes where like, let me just start all the pretties. I mean, if I have the stuff, and I want to see them finished, I've got to start them, and so I want to start them. But then I have these other moods in which I want to see the progress on what I've already started, so I don't want to start anything, I just want to finish things or at least see a lot of progress on them. Right now, I'm in a see a lot of progress mode. I don't really want to start, start things, so... Uh, but I've only been in that mode for like three weeks, four weeks maybe, so. Anyway, here's my oldest project. This is Frodo and Galadriel, artwork by Matt Stewart, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. I started this November 16th, 2016. It is on 25 Count Lugana. It is currently being stitched two over one tenth stitch, but it has been begun, it, it began two over one full cross. That's like this section. So this is what it currently looks like, chaotic. Um, last time I worked on this was for a hundred days or the hundredth day of the year rather and it I like was stitching in some of the threads I did some up there and I did some down here <laughs> that's what I was doing I think halfway through the top is somewhere up here I have no idea it's a yeah big piece. You can see how little I've done of it. I've only put in 119 stitches in the last seven months. That's 0.04%. I've only worked on it for the hundredth day. This was supposed to get six days this month as part of my stitch mania, which was a middle earth mania. Um, and then I didn't I had to do with like my brain and switching things out and I just, I didn't. didn't do it. But I think I'm going to be switching up my like weekly rotation pieces and I think this is going to be in it. We'll hit that at the end because I haven't actually thought of it yet. I just have some vague ideas. Anyway. So we are now at 6.07% on Frodo and Galadriel. And for six years, that is sad. Okay, my next piece is a finish. This. Oh my gosh. It looks so good. I love seeing my finishes again, and I really need to, like, frame them and stuff so I can enjoy them 
much more regularly. Okay, so this is, there's a thread there. This is Mystery Town. It's a stitch along from 2017 by Ships Manor. The fabric, I don't have, I don't have any of that information. Um, <laughs> the fabric is an Ada, but I can't remember if it's 16 or 18 count. I didn't, I didn't pull this information. I'm sorry, but it's clouds. I think is the name dyed by Ships Manor. There are some, it's, it's mostly DMC, but there are like variegated threads that were also from Ships Manor. Uh, this piece is fun because you get all the background and then each section you had a choice. Like this barn could have been a barn or a church. Um, there were like two different house choices, um, things like that. So, uh, we did some color conversions like, like this. It says Lee's Pet Cafe, um, but we, we color converted, I say we, this was Kaylin and I, we color converted it to like purples instead of whatever was charted, I have no idea. And there were other things. I know this pink I converted because I think I changed the brown as well. Um, this I'm, I stitched as charted. I'm pretty certain this house was as charted as well. I think I chose the colors for the hot air balloon. So that is this piece. I started this in January of 2017 on the 20th and I finished it. I have, I'm lame. I did not write down that information where I could see it right now. I have that information somewhere but not in front of me, but it was in the last seven months. Okay. That was the old, that was my last piece in 2017 to finish. That's exciting. So 2018, the only piece from 2018 that I have is Father Christmas with Toys. This is the max color version, the regular size, but max color. This is artwork by Yvonne Gilbert, charted by Heaven and Earth Design. I love the old fashioned Father Christmas, traditional Father Christmas. I don't know. I love him um, and his coloring and everything. He's going to be fantastic when finished. Whenever that happens. This is on 28 count. Two over one tent stitch. And you can see there's a lot of smatterings. When I started this, I, I had tested out a bunch of different, between Frodo and Galadriel and this, I had tested out a bunch of different kind of approaches. And so this one, I was looking at extreme cross country, starting with the smallest stitch count and quickly learned that drove me crazy because look, I had to use all of these waste away knots and then it just looked messy and drove me insane. So here we are. First page finished. That's the second page. Um, confetti craziness, but it looks so good so 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 good but yeah the the red isn't confetti but like in the blue and up here all of that part <laughs> was so much confetti but it looks so good 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 this piece i put in 6143 stitches since my last whip 
afraid seven months ago and that is a 2.71 percent increase so we are now at 6.43 percent which is more than i've stitched on frodo and galadriel i do believe that this is a smaller stitch count than frodo and galadriel though like overall so it, it's quicker to hit different percentages on this piece than it is on Frodo. That one, I have no plans on like finishing it quickly. Um, I, I have no plans to finish anything quickly. What am I talking about? It's one that will likely come out predominantly around Christmas time. Um, but I have a lot of other full coverage pieces that I would prefer to finish first, even though I love it and I'd like to see it finished. It's, it's not, it's not like high up on the list of get these ones done. All right, moving into 2019. Okay. My bookshelf. I started this January 24th, 2019. This was a restart. Um, the first one, I started in 2017, I believe. It, yeah, I started it in 2017 after Frodo and Galadriel. But I started it on 25 count, two strands, full cross, so bulky, hated it. Um, and so I... Restarted it. It's on 28 count, two strands, um, tenth stitch. Okay. This one I've neglected quite a lot over the last couple months. Um, so I need to get working on it a lot. It has 93,539 stitches in the last seven months. That's a 12.95% increase, um, and I should be probably closer to like a 20% increase, <laughs> but that's okay. 65.54%, um, that's where we're at right now. We are closing in, sorry, I gotta scoot back. We are closing in on 500,000. It's at 473,000 stitches right now. So that's exciting. Okay. Are you ready for this? I hope I'm far enough back. Okay. So here we are. Look at this. <gasps> There's no way we can do a side-by-side -side comparison of this just because of how big it is. So you're just going to have to memorize what my before was like. The goal is still to finish that third shelf um, end of October this year. So... I need to make sure that that I stay on top of this. Okay, sorry. Let me bring that up. So good, guys. Look at that. Um, I might not even have started this shelf. My one year whip parade probably was right before I started this shelf, so all of this would have been new since then. Something like that. Anyway, isn't that so good? Okay. It is, it is impossible. Okay, these are, my rods are hitting everything. This is the super size max color version. Oh, I didn't even show you the artwork. Y'all, I was just too excited to show you this. <laughs> um, 
This is the super size max color version. It's Treasure Hunt Bookshelf um, by Amy Stewart. Here we go. <laughs> Charted by Heaven and Earth design. Um, yep. So I'm on this third shelf right now. And then I will work on this shelf to for a 2024 finish. That's the plan. And if I have to go monogamous to make it work, I will. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think I'll have to. I hope I don't have to. But I will if I must. It's so good. Oh, look at it. I can't, I can't sit this far forward and show you with all the things. There we go. It's hard for me to put this away once I have it out. So the bottom shelf will hit around here. Right, like that. It's so good looking. You guys, it's incredible. Uh, so I'm in this section with this open book. Here we go. The section is right about from here to there. The diagonal is, it, it's the top corner and the bottom corner. And so now it's just gonna start shrinking. But look at the pages in this book. Is that not fantastic? And then we've got that butterfly and one, this one I stitched um, as part of this shelf. And then we've got this little butterfly. Oh, it's so good. So, so, so good. So yes, the book is open all the way over here and I can't, I can't wait. I love it. <sighs> okay. So yes, this one is going to uh, be refocused on. I will, I haven't recalculated but I'm pretty certain that I will just focus on getting 600 stitches a day on it and we should still be good I shouldn't have to go more than that but I ought to do my calculation and figure that one out I've taken so many days off of it for many reasons but that's okay because I had worked my way down to where I only had to do like 570 stitches and so I think I think I'll be good I don't feel like I'm in danger does that make sense oh it's so hard to not show that one it's hard to put that one away okay my other 2019 project is this Dimensions kit. It's a gold collection. It's called Woodland Enchantress. The artist is Ruth Sanderson. And let me show this to you. This is so Treasure Hunt Bookshelf is like my daily focus piece. It's got a stitch count. Okay. This is like my daily timed piece. In theory, it's also had a lot of skipped days, but that's okay. Um, this has been my daily 30 piece, so I try to stitch on it for 30 minutes every day. Uh, some days I go much longer, and some days I just don't stitch on it. <laughs> but that's okay. I did all the background first, and it looked amazing, and now I've been working here. Sorry, let me move this needle minder. There we go. Uh, so now I'm working on her dress. All of this. And look at the snow. It's, it's like magic from her hand. <laughs> um... I don't really know what to call it. It's not really snow, but anyway, it looks so good. So my plan is I'm filling in here and then I will work my way this way. 
that's my plan. Um, and I started doing this as my daily 30 in January. So here we are at the end of May and look how far I've gotten on it. I think I had roughly like this much done. Like here, like that's all I had done when I started this year. So in five months, I've, I've filled in all the rest of this. This is the kit fabric at 16 count gray Ada, um, doing whatever stitches they tell me to do. So a lot of this is half cross, but the strands vary. It's either three, four, five, or six. Um, some of the browns are six. Um, some of these, like in the golds and stuff, some of those are full crosses, but most of the background is half cross. These flowers and the greenery, um, same with these red ones, if you can see these red ones here, those are all full cross as well. The dress is full cross. There are some, like, colors, like this. Those are half cross. And places like this blue, where it's her dress kind of blending in with the background. There's gold that's down here, too. Um, where it's like she's... It gives her kind of like that ethereal feeling because it's not like just solid, here's the Enchantress. I hope that makes sense. I guess I can pull out the artwork again and show you what I mean. Yeah, see see here where she's got like the the gold here and it's, it's more of an overlay than the color of her dress, same here. And same with that blue and stuff. All right, that I started January 31st, 2019. It will remain my daily 30 until it is finished. As my oldest uh, non-digital pattern <laughs> project. It's, it's my oldest project that's not, in my mind, it's not full coverage, even though it absolutely is full coverage. Um, but because it's a paper pattern, it, it doesn't have the same feel as a full coverage for me. Anyway, the three older projects are all heaven and earth design projects, so it's that one. Okay, Queen of the Night, 2021. So in a lot of 2019, I did not stitch um, like it was super sporadic and 2020 was when I started stitching again with my bookshelf and I was monogamous for a while uh, but 2021 is the next time and this was in November of 2021 so there's quite a large gap between Woodland Enchantress and Queen of the Night this is artwork by Josephine Wall um, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. This one is a gift for my very good bestie friend in Utah. Her name's Lisa. She's getting this piece from me. And this is on 25 count, 2 over 1 tenth stitch. Here we are. Oh, I forgot I had threads. Let's see. Hopefully we can get a before and after picture if I hold it way back here. This I've put in 5,155 stitches. That's a 3.35% increase. Uh, no idea where those stitches went in, but I have kind of been all over the place. Um, I know I finished 
here, and then I know I've been over here, and you can see I've got stuff, yeah. So that's what it looks like right now. So good. Her head is here, like there are some bright blues. Can I, can I, can I show you that up close? There are some of those brighter blues right here, and that's like her flower crown on top of her head. So we're at 29.84% now on this piece, which I'm quite excited about. Yep, yep, yep. yep. I should, that's another potential. I need to write this down somewhere. And then, okay, now I can remember maybe something later on. All right, also started in November of 2021 was Bubble Bubble Chocolate Trouble. This would have also been when No Smoking was started because Kaylin and I started Randall Spangler pieces together. Uh, this is by Randall Spangler, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, I like cutesy Halloween. I don't do scary, but here's cutesy. This is on 25 count, two over one tenth stitch, and I am working on the sky, all the sky bits. Here it is in its entirety, and here we are, um, yeah, this is the curve of the moon which I do not have permission currently to stitch, so I'm not. I know I'm working my way down here to where the pumpkins are. That's what I was doing last time. And once I reach the pumpkins, I will spread out towards the right side of the piece. Halfway is right about there. So yeah, it's just um, lots of blue. <laughs> It stitches up pretty quickly because there's not a ton of colors to deal with at this point. But it only got 119 stitches in the last seven months. Um, that would have been for the hundredth day of the year. That was that's all. That's all the attention this got. And honestly, it's not likely a lot of these pieces with my new rotation, they're just like fairly inactive projects until I continuously bring down that, that whip number, which means I need to stop starting all the things so that I can do that. Okay. In 2022, this is a big year. I started lots of things because of Stitch Mania, because I wanted to participate in Stitch Mania, and I decided to have a different project on every day of the month. And that's where all my trouble started. <laughs> so this is Temperature Library. This is by Christie's Corner Needlework on Etsy. And this is based in Virginia with all my personalizations. I charted um, the background for this to be my, um, my colors. I wanted jewel tones for my legend, my key, my legend, my color ranges. Uh, 
And so I stitched the 2022 in a Krynik. It's a sparkly Krynik, which you won't be able to see the sparkles. Uh, and then I wanted the full color range there. I got a turtle with my hanging plant, or my, it's not a hanging plant, my drapey plant. Wow. Words, Suki. And then I put a kitty cat over here. We've got a spyglass and candles. And I do remember I had to do some charting of this one to make it fit. This is a rose and this is a bat. It's an upside down bat. Kaylin likes to call it a Darth Vader screwdriver. Uh, if I had thought of it, I would have removed a row so that there was a space between its ears and the shelf. But I didn't think of it until it was done and then I didn't want to redo it. We've got a bobbin or a spool of thread here. And then a plant and a picture, a heart, a snail, he's so cute, a hobbit house, a plant and a globe, a toadstool, a fish tank, sunglasses, a yarn bowl with knitting needles, another plant, pumpkins. These ones actually were charted for right here. <laughs> and the snow globe, I think that was also the one that was charted for right there. The rose was as well, but just about every, uh, and this one, but most everything else either got moved or chosen specifically. So yeah, that's, that was my year in 2022 in terms of temperatures. I did use my full range of colors. My darkest color is like, I think this one. Yeah, like this dark purple is the darkest and then the hottest is this um, like magenta, dark magenta color. Oh, I'm so happy to see these pieces again. Like I said, they need to be framed and up on the wall. Okay. Peaceful Garden Path. This is an old kit by Sunset. And pretty certain I got this from my mom. She got rid of a bunch of her, or passed along a lot of her um, like supplies. So this is kit Ada probably 14 count and that's where it's at it looks look at look okay hold on I started the back stitching there but look at what those look like versus that it looks so much better um those are in all four corners and then you've got the middle seam there look at this look at the it's so good and the brick wall yeah I have not touched this in a while it's on my whip go board but I haven't done whip go from April or May and now we're about to hit June and I don't even know what my May pieces were I only know what my April pieces were so I need to look these things up I did mean to do that before this video and I just I didn't I didn't do it um, but I started that January 31st, 2022. This one I started on my birthday last year. This is Twisted Band Sampler by Northern Expressions Needlework. Um, I do want to do both of their um, samplers with the same fabric but using whatever their colorway is for both of them. This one, it's on a 32 count black Belfast linen. Oh, you can totally see through it. Well, this is what, this is the full piece. And 
there. Now you can see just this part. So how this works is you've got a band that's cross stitch and then you've got a band that's specialty stitches and then cross stitch and then specialty stitches. A word to the wise guys. Don't do what I did. I don't know what I was thinking, but for some reason I did this in DMC and then I switched to a Verisois and then I started back in the DMC and and then when I finished the pink part, I realized that not only had I stitched this with two strands instead of this, which is one strand, but that I wasn't supposed to be using DMC at all. I had ordered the entire Averisois for this. I had them all. Yeah. Major, major meltdown. Um, anyway, so I stitched the rest of this in the Averisois color and will continue to stitch Averisois. And I went back to um, one strand instead of two strands. So... So this pink is two strand DMC, this is one strand DMC, this is one strand of Arisois, one strand of Arisois, the rest of this we will just be doing one strand of Arisois the whole way down. <laughs> and I'm not unpicking it. I'm not going to unpick any bit of this. It's just going to stay. Um, yeah. So this color, it's a Arisois didn't touch it at all. The Averisois equivalent, rather. And this, this pink here, if I had done the Averisois, it would have been this same color. So it's close. You can see that it's close. Not exact, but it's going to be beautiful and finished. It's just the, the, the bitty corner here, right? It's fine. It's a story that I'm just going to have in my life. I do have a light pad that I use to work with the dark fabric. If you are trying to work with dark fabric and have not tried a light pad, um, give it a try. It makes a difference. I was also talking with somebody who was working with a... It wasn't an opalescent fabric, but it was a glittery, sparkly fabric. And, um, and, and she... After she and I had this conversation, she tried dimming her light. Um, she, it wasn't a light pad. It was her overhead light. She tried dimming it, and it made it easier on her eyes because the brighter light on the sparkly fabric was really, like, reflecting off of it and tiring her eyes out a lot. And anyway, So play around with light above and below, depending on what your fabric you're working on. It could help. I know that I had finished band uh, two on that piece, the specialty stitches. And so in the last seven months, I did band three. All right. Also started on my birthday. I started two pieces in the same day. It was Neuschwanstein Castle. This is artwork by Robert Finale. I actually don't know if that's how he says his last name, but that's how I'm going to say his last name. Um, isn't that beautiful? I love it. This is on 25 Count Lugana. And again, zero rush. <laughs> uh, this has 114 stitches more. Out of the whole thing. Here's the whole thing. And there we are. Hardly anything. This is now at 1.53%. Again, this is one of those pieces that only came out for 100th day. So. But it might be even lower priority than Father Christmas for now. So definitely will be like 
snail's pace for many, many years. Mayari, look at this. This is Mayari, Deity of the Moon by Bella Filipina. She is so gorgeous. I am so excited to show you this one. Okay, so she's on 28 count opalescent Lugana. It's Cosmos by Bestitch Me. Um, 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 um. Yes. I started her on March 12th, 2022. Guys, she's big. She's not going to use all of this fabric, like there'll, there'll be a portion on this side that gets cut off. Um, and this is how tall she is. And the bottom of her dress is about here. So how I started this was I actually, because of how I wanted this pink stuff placed, I started it at the bottom and then I worked all the way up and then... I got the top, her halo filled in. Look at this. Ah, it's so pretty. This is fully, can you see the beads on it? There is this, the blue here is DMC. All the other stitches within this, there's there's a silver, there is a pinkish, there's a darker pink here. That is Krynik. But all the remaining colors is beads. I so wish I could show you this. It is amazing, incredible, and... The camera can't do it justice at all. Look at that. Look how big it is. So where her head will go in here, this is her hair right there. But So next time I work on it, it'll start from her hair. Um, now that I have beads, I need to get scroll rods for this um, so that I'm not, I don't want to stitch it in hand, but I can't use a hoop or Q-snap uh, once I finish her head because <laughs> I won't be able to move that at all. So I just need to get some scroll rods. I haven't done that yet. The only thing I haven't done, you'll see these empty spaces. These are for treasures. I did not put those on. I will probably leave those until the very, very end. Haven't totally decided yet. Next time she comes out is probably when I will decide. But I did all the other beads in here. Man, I wish you could see how many beads there were. You just can't. And the sparkle. It's so pretty. So, so pretty. So, um, the Lugana dye is lighter than if you were to get the linen but it's still look how look how pretty that is still but i have seen the linen dye um of cosmos and it is a lot darker so if if you're looking into that that may be a difference but she's still very very gorgeous on this lighter dye Oh, man. She is. She's tall, though. Um, let's see. What does she stitch? She's, like, over two. Two strands over two, whatever it is. Um, except for the Krynik, where it's one strand over the two. Also, word to the wise, Krynik and most metallic threads, like, use beeswax. It makes a world of difference when you're stitching with it. Just use beeswax, a thread conditioner. They're the same thing, basically. Um... 
but petite treasure braid, which I have now stitched with, you don't need to use beeswax. It stitches up beautifully straight off the, um, whatever it's called, thing, card, the card. Um, but, but you don't have to be afraid of working with Krynic or another metallic. Just use like a thread conditioner and, and you'll be, you'll be good to go then. So your choice. My pile is ridiculous. All right, moving right along. This is the Summer Garden by the Drawn Thread. Oh, let me take it out of its plastic. For decreased glare effect. I did get the kit from them, and the fabric is not this fabric, but that's okay. It still looks good, it's just not as light. It's See how this is... It's darker. Anyway, I do want to do all the seasons of these gardens. Plus more. There's so many beautiful ones. Um, so I've got, I started with the house, and here I've got the tree, this bird, and these flowers. It looks so, so good. Uh, so because I have the kit, I'm using their, like, it's, it's uh, needlepoint silk, so NPIs and dinky dyes. And I think there's a, there is a silken colors, which I have not used yet, but there is that. This is a 32 count Belfast linen in khaki. And I don't, I don't dislike it. Um, I think it looks quite lovely. It just is not the same as this. That's all. That's okay. It's a very like floppy kind of linen. There's no back stitching done on any of this yet, so. And there's there's words that will go across the bottom. Not there yet. But I am working my way through this side and then I will come back and work my way through the right side. That's as tall as it gets, though. It's just, it's long and skinny. Long and skinny. Short. Wide. It's wide and short. There we go. Long and skinny is like tall and skinny. It's not that. It's tall. It's long. If you took long and skinny and laid it on its side, that's what this piece is. You're welcome. Um, it does have specialty stitches in it. Um, and they do give you the diagrams. I will show you that. I have not done any of the specialty stitches in this piece yet. That I can't wait to. Yep, I can't wait to. There's something very like relaxing about working with this piece and I think it's because I can stitch it in hand very easily. It's hard to stitch in hand for me because I don't know I think it's the way that I hold it I just put straight on my wrist and then and then I have to mm, baby my wrist for a while. Um, but, but this piece, it's little enough and light enough to where it's very easy for me to hold it exactly how I need to when I'm stitching on it. And, and there's just something so very soothing and relaxing about that, 
that I really, really, really enjoy. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, so when was that? March 19th. All right. My next piece. This is my ink circle, Cirque de Corot, which, um, Anyway, they're all of these, this square shape thing, all of them are different. The little, 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 little ones, um, those ones aren't different, those repeat, but, but all of, like, this size and bigger, those all are different. This one is such a lovely piece. I am using, uh, this Silk for you, silks for you, uh, PR090. Isn't that gorgeous? It is so, so pretty and I love it. Like, perfect choice for this. It's on a 32 count Belfast linen uh, called Stormy Night. What it looks like. Um, it won't use all of this fabric. Well, I don't think it will. So this is where I'm at. I started this March 26th, 2022. Look how good that is. Like, it's just the variegation and it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. So this one I've put in 354 stitches in the last seven months, which is 2.13%. So now we're at 8.6% finished. I love this one. This is um, a printed fabric, so the back side is just gray, and then you've got the modeling on the other side. So if you do get this. I got it off of 123 Stitch. If you do get this fabric, uh, make sure you start it on the right side. <laughs> Otherwise, you might be sad. <laughs> it does. It looks so good. I am stitching it with two strands over two. Two over two. There's your close-up again. So, so pretty. So what I do is I cut off, like I keep this, but then I cut off pieces and then I stitch from those pieces. Some people like cut the whole thing, but I haven't done that, mostly just because I don't know because once you cut them then you need a way to keep them and I don't have that I haven't ever done it so I haven't I didn't do it I did not do it all right my Chatelaine this is the autumn water garden mandala I would love to do all the water gardens and many more of the Chatelaines. My list is long. The picture cannot do it justice because of how big it is. It really, it really can't do justice whatsoever. I am doing this with all the called for stuff. Okay, so whatever, like, all the things, all the Glorianas, the petite treasure braids, the silken colors. Here's my Glorianas. I got the beads. I'm doing I'm doing all the call for stuff. Okay. The fabric is big and I do know that it doesn't take all of this fabric. 
but there's the center. And I have an arrow somewhere right here to remind me which way up is. Okay. You guys, do you see this right here? <gasps> Those are fish. Oh, I, I forgot. I need to put it on this side. They're fish. All of, okay, so you see how this is like coming down in here? That's all that's left in this section um, cross stitch wise. Anything else that needs to be filled in in here are specialty stitches, there's back stitching, and there's beads. But otherwise the regular stitching is done. What I haven't decided is if I will just do all the regular stitches, then go back in for all the specialties, and then do the beads, or if I will do the specialties as I go, but leave the beading to the end. Option three or four, whatever I'm, whatever option. The last option is that I get scroll rods for this as well as Mayari. Um, or scroll rods that I can change out the project. But other, if, I, if I do that, I can do beads as I go, which I really like doing because I love seeing the finished look of it, but it looks so good. So yeah, these are fish and you can't even see that in the, in the main picture. You can't see that one, one little bit. But that is Autumn. Water Garden Mandala as it currently is. This is the one where I've stitched Petite Treasure Braid. It's There's two colors right here. That all the way around is Petite Treasure Braid and it stitched up like a dream. No beeswax needed. It was just like thread with no extra work. But like I said, working with Krynik or another metallic thread, if I use beeswax, it makes that quite manageable as well. So don't be afraid to use whatever is called for, but I know a lot of people will convert their Krynik to Petrit Treasure Braid, just so they don't have to deal with the um, like beeswax aspect. So this I started April mm, 29th, 2022. I have it as a paper pattern, which is crazy to look at, but once you start orienting yourself to it, it's it's not bad. Just kind of put on blinders to the sections that you're not working on and just look at where you are working. If you get the PDF, it's really not any cheaper to get the PDF than the paper pattern. Um, but I got, I got mine through 123 Stitch when it was on a sale. Anyway, but what, what the PDF will allow you to do is like scroll in to see a section. So like the one over one stitching, being able to scroll that in, depending on your eyesight, might be a really, really good thing to do. But chatelaines are gorgeous and amazing, and I recommend everyone to... Consider a chatelaine. <laughs> or at least see one in person because they're just gorgeous. And big and beautiful. Gorgeous and beautiful. Yes, that's what I said. And I'm sticking to it. Okay. Um, oh, now we have like a bunch of finishes to show you. Great. Okay. So this one is... December. I started it the 3rd of May in 2022. And this is the December piece in the Little House Needleworks Calendar Girl series. My idea for all of these is to finish them into a flat fold. Well, lots of flat folds since there's 12 of them. Um, but I've never done a flat fold, so even though I know 
how to do it. I've watched tutorials. I've seen people do it. And I'm confident in my ability to do it. I'm not worried about that. But because it's new, I just have to actually get myself to do the new thing, you know? Um, maybe this is a good thing for me to do like a stitchy hangout. Maybe to get myself to just like get going on it. Because I did that when I started my Chatelaine and some other things. Like I did it um, live streaming and so it just got me to do it and everybody else got to because if you have any kind of hesitation and you need to see somebody new try it I got you covered I've done it before I'll do it again anyway so this is December and on May 4th I started uh, How Great Thou Art this is by My Big Toe Designs, and I used all the called for Weeks Dye Works. It uses just three color, four, four colors. Gunmetal is the dark color, Dolphin is here, Raisin, and Tarragon is the green. I could have done a little better in... I could have lowered it just a little bit and then I wouldn't have this tiny situation going on, but that's not how I did it, obviously. Um, I think this was my most recent finish out of all my finishes that I have to show you was this one. But this was nice. It was a really nice travel project because it's little. I could stitch it in hand. It used minimal colors, um, paper pattern, so I didn't have to deal with any devices either. I liked it. I liked it. And you can choose your own colors very easily on these pieces. Super easy. Alicia, um, Adventures in Stitching, Adventures with Stitching. Alicia, she uh, is doing Amazing Grace. I can't remember which one. Why can't I remember Alicia? Anyway, she's doing it in a monochrome color. It looks kind of like lace that way um, because it's... It's like a slightly lighter color than her fabric, and, and it's beautiful. It's white work. It's gorgeous. So, anyway, there's that one. This is, shoot, I don't have any information whatsoever. I know the color of this fabric is called white chocolate, and it might be a 32 count. Stitch two strands over two. Uh, yeah, 32 count makes sense. Here it is up close. Mm -hmm. Kaylin is not a fan of how that curves. She thinks it should have just been straight. That's, that's okay, she's allowed to have an opinion. All right. On the 13th of May, remember, here we are straight into Mania. So a lot of the starts I knew were going to become projects within Mania. And then whatever I didn't start prior to May got started in May. So this was May 13th. 2022. This is October. Also, it was not fun to start like eight of these, 10 of these, 10. I started all 10 of these, all 10. I had January and February finished prior. And then I had the remaining 10 to start. I started them all in May and was so tired of like that stick thing. Anyway, 
but it got me to start all of them, which made me finish all of them, and it's lovely. Anyway, pumpkins. Look at the pumpkins. It's so pretty. These are on 28 count. Um, 28 count. I can't remember the color of the fabric at this point. 28 count. I don't know. If you really want to know, reach out and I will look it up for you. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's October. And then on the 15th of May, I started this piece that is now finished. God rest you, merry gentlemen, by Lindy Stitches. The fabric is a green, I don't know, I don't know, it's green. And it's DMC, but then there are some fancy floss that I can't remember. I can't remember if it's Weeks Dye Works or not. I feel like it is, but I, I know it's this color and this color and then like the bed frame browns. This is so cute. Look at them. Look at them sleeping in their beds. I love it. Love it. It's so pretty. And the it the colors in it, I just I loved it. I love the jewel tones. That's for certain. Okay. I'm pretty sure the fabric color was just like light green. Nothing fancy. That's all I remember. Snuggle up, no knees. This is so cute. All right, so snuggle up, no knees is from Kaylee tent stitch. Her shop is the sewingshop.ca. She's in Canada, so make sure you get the CA, not the dot com, okay? And the only thing is this is an alternative nose. You have to ask her specifically for it. It doesn't come charted that. It comes with like a, a yellow nose, but this is like cold nose Nomi. Otherwise, I used all of the colors as called for. The fabric, I hand dyed it. It's a ooh, 32 count um, Belfast linen. Its color is like dusty rose, and this is kind of the original color. And then I, I dyed it with this darker color, and it turned out beautiful. And I have more that I can use for another small project. Uh, the only other change I made besides stitching the cold nose version is there are three marshmallows charted here. And I, I couldn't, they just looked like teeth to me. I couldn't see them and I didn't want like, I didn't, I didn't want scary know me. I wanted marshmallows. So what I did was I filled in the mug and the, the drink color, which I also changed the drink color to be darker than charted. And then I used little beads and I just placed them to be little marshmallows. So, snuggle up, gnomies. It's cold outside. So cute. I love it. Um, yes, so I started this one on the 21st of May, 2022, and I had finished it on the 10th of April. I finished the stitching portion on the 9th, and then I got the little beads done on the 10th. 
the only one I remember because I know what I was doing when I finished it. All right, I told you, lots of finishes. Here's November with her blackbirds and the pie. This is the only one that is tri-colors for the words. All the other words are in one color, um, the months, the calendar months. So I started this on the 22nd of May in 2022. And she is all finished. So really, this whole series is done. I just need to finish them. And I do want to do them in a flat fold. Um, but that means I need to make decisions on like the backing fabric and stuff. And I, somebody help me. Somebody tell me what to get. Um, <laughs> help my executive dysfunction. Um, yeah. I think if I write down a list of what I need to get in order to fully finish these, like that really is probably the next step I need to do. And then I can go and buy the things and then I can just take it one step at a time. But thinking of like, and finish this makes my brain go, what? No, that's too much. It's too much because I have not yet gone through the steps the first time. And so all of them feel new to me, which makes the whole thing feel overwhelming. Plus I'm doing 12 of them, which makes the overwhelm feeling like 12 times bigger, even though the process is the same exact thing for each of those 12. Please tell me I'm not the only one who does things like that, like talks themselves into like, I'm not, it's not that I'm talking myself into it, it's just that it's there and I'm acknowledging that it's there, but it's hard to then like move past it. <sighs> At least I know what I need to do. I do know how to work through it, but getting myself to do that first step sometimes is not the easy, the easy thing. My next project, I do not have a finished look for it printed out. Um, but this is the only project that I did not touch in the last seven months. This is House Plants um, by Owl Forest Embroidery. This was their like free stitch along from last year. So I started this on the 27th of May. This is 40 count. Um, it's a green color, it's 40 count. I do need to take out this right here. You can not really see it. It blends too much into the fabric. So what I'm doing is stitching this one strand over one thread on 40 count. I love the tininess. It's adorable. Super adorable. However, I do need to frog all of this, um, like the lacy shelfy thing. I don't know what to call it. And then just pick a different color that's going to show up better. But this is part one. It is completely, like, all the parts are out and it's beautiful, but I've only done part one. I stitched this all on the 27th of May, 2022, and I haven't touched it since. That's great. Good job, Suki. <laughs> um, so obviously I need to do more on this at some point. It will make it into the uh, rotation. Water Lily, that's the name of this, is Water Lily, and it is a linen. But I love the tiny stitches. They are adorable. Okay, my next start was on the 30th of May. This was another kit that 
I got from my mom. Uh, Jan, this one's a Jan Lynn. It's called um, Victorian Christmas Bell Pull. Uh, it's the paper is shiny, which is why there's a glare. I can't, I can't help that at all. I think the most tedious thing about this is that, like the holly corners, you do them so many times. But there we are. This lettering is so, so fun to stitch. And then the border, this is a metallic thread. It is absolutely a pain to work with if you don't use beeswax. So use beeswax, just do it. But I did backstitch um, all of the, the holly leaves and everything. So next time I work on it, I can work within the scene that is here. The boy and girl skating, I think. Yeah. They're little skating. So next time I work on it, whenever that is, I don't know, Christmas, that's, that's where it will be. This is just the kit. I think it's a 14 count Ada. Yep. All the kit stuff right here. All right, the 31st of May, the last day of mania. This is not the right project. This one is. This is Canopy Heart um, by Dakota Detweiler. This was when she was with Heaven and Earth Designs. She is no longer, so you cannot get this chart from them. Dakota is now with Charting Creations, but I don't think that this one is charted there. But it only uses 10 colors. And I love it. Look at this. It's the heart canopy. Heart, obviously, it's called canopy heart. I started this one with Alara. Um, I bought her the pattern, and she sent me the fabric. This is a 28 count. Uh, I'm doing this full cross, one over one full cross. One of my very rare full coverage pieces with full cross. So anyway, it's rolled up, but that's, that's essentially how wide it is. And that's where we're at. 129 stitches only in the last seven months, which means I only worked on this for the 100th day. Sound like a theme? Um, I know I filled in down here. I think I might have filled in these stitches too, but then I came down here and like stitched out that, that right there. I have seen this further along by other people and it looks so amazing. And I really, really wish I could spend a lot more time on every single project that I have, and this piece is no exception. But yes, there's only 10 colors in this piece, and the shading is incredible. That's at 0.44% finished now. And that is the artwork that is, um, if you are part of my Discord village, um, the artwork for that village is Canopy Heart because um, it just makes so much sense to me. The server is called the Suki Village and that is double meaning, it's my name, Suki, but Suki is a Japanese word that means love and so it is a village where we can support each other in love and um, and then to have this artwork with the heart in overhead in nature is just um, beautiful so that's why that one is the the artwork for the the server okay 
Then we finished Mania and I had a planned start with Catherine, the um, Needleberry Stitcher. This is Sabrina. She's a Mirabilia. Uh, Catherine and I are stitching this for comparison purposes. So we have the same fabric. We're using of uh, this the called for threads. Catherine is stitching it with the beads and I am stitching it without beads. I'm using the DMC color equivalent of the beads plus a blending filament to give it just a little bit of sparkle. The other difference is that Catherine is stitching the, or has stitched, we're both done the skin now. Catherine's skin is as charted, um, like over two, two over two, and I stitched the skin on my version one over one. So when we are both finished, we're gonna meet up and we will be able to show them side by side and you can see that you can stitch Mirabilia's without the beads if you don't like the beads and you can stitch it with over two skin or over one skin. We just wanted to show options um, for people who may be intimidated by Mirabilia's or for budgetary reasons, um, don't want to bead or whatever. We just wanted to be able to show options. So. That's where Sabrina came around. So she is on Sprite. The color is Sprite. If I picture this plus 28 count. Here's the full fabric. It's a lovely, like, purple color. And here's where I am. This is um, back stitching threads waiting for me to fill in more so that I didn't I didn't end the threads. I just like parked them off to the side. So you can see her skin is one over one. And it is all complete. Her skin is done. Um, the variegated thread is up here. The wa the Karen Water Lily. There's two of them. That one, this one. Umbria and the red one is Cardinal. And that is in her, so Umbria is one of these red colors. There's like four of them in here. And then the leaves is the Umbria color. And then you can see these and her earring. Those would be beads normally, but for me, it's it's got that blending filament and is, is stitched. It's just like, a bit of sparkle, um, which camera does not ever pick up sparkle, but in person you can see just that little bit of sparkle going on, and I love it so much. So next time I work on her, hold on, let me put these flosses away. The water lilies are beautiful to stitch with. They're so soft. Oh, this is the, this is the blending filament I ended up using. Now, if I did it again, I would pick a different one, but, um, I was guessing. This is, I, I just remember it was like a holographic. It says 001L on the end. Okay. Um, it's okay. It is fine but I think I would do a different one if I were to pick again. But uh, I, I thought that the silver would look good no matter what bead I was substituting with, so I didn't have to pick multiple bead colors or 
shiny color, whatever. Um, I think, I think I want to do this part next time I work on her. And then I will tackle all of the dress. <laughs> I think that's what I'm going to do, but I'm not positive. It might be smart for me to like start in on the dress and go like back and forth just to break up that dress. But at the same time, I, I, I like to see it come down like this. So I think I'm going to get all of this finished and then I will do all of that. Another bonus, though, with, um, yeah, let me just show it one more time. She's going to be so big, like, there. <laughs> the fancy ladies are big. If you don't realize how big they are, it's, they're, they're sizable. Um, now I can't remember what I was going to say about this. I interrupted myself. Uh, so Catherine and I started this the 6th of June, 2022. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Because I'm not stitching it with beads, I can just easily stitch everything as I go. And I, there's no worry about those beads getting crunched with a hoop or getting scroll rods or anything like that. There's no need. Okay, so then I, I had a very long break um, of starting things, and then this was actually a restart. I started it earlier in the year, but I needed to change the fabric. I wasn't happy with it. This is Pavan for These Times. It's by Long Dog Sampler. And I, the first one I dyed it ended up being like a really light purple. And my, my thread faded into it too much. It looked very pretty, but it wasn't the contrast that I really, really wanted to see. This is also silks um, for you. It is PR150. There is a variegation in this gray. I, I think you can see it. Can you see it? I hope you can see it. It is variegated, but it is subtle, which I love. This is a 36 count even weave. And I hand dyed it to be this dark, dark purple. And I am so happy with this one. This is the contrast I wanted instead of the, the light purple um, fabric. This is the contrast I wanted. It, look at that, it looks so, 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 so good. Ugh, come on, open, there we go. There are some bits that is like, there's a little bit of subtle modeling, um, which you can kind of see. So it's not just one solid. I just, I stirred it, but I didn't stir it so frequently that it would take evenly. But it gives this contrast. Look at that. It's so good. I love it. So yes, this is that um, PR150 from Silks For You, which is Again, silk is just so beautiful to stitch up. <sighs> I know that this was one of my WIPCO pieces for April. Um, and yeah, like I said, I haven't touched April yet for WIPCO. So <laughs> June is like catch up on WIPCO month, I think. We'll see. I haven't totally set down my plans um, yet, 
on how I'm going to like move forward, but I have vague thoughts that I will probably spew at you when I finish showing you my projects, which will um, yeah. <laughs> help me solidify. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I put in 704 stitches in the last seven months. Um, that's a 3.35% increase. So it's now at 4.7% done. It was a restart. I restarted it in October of 2022. And then in November, I met Alara in person for the first time, like a year after she first encouraged me to start Floss 2. A uh, long time in coming. <laughs> it was so great. So we commemorated our first meeting with starting Spirit of the Phoenix. This is artwork by Dakota Detweiler from Charting Creations. Uh, we actually saw this piece. I saw it and shared it with Alara, and we both messaged um, Nicole. Hmm. We both mess Nikki from Charting Creations. And we're like, please, please, please chart this one. And it was like the first Dakota release on Charting Creations. So it's beautiful. Again, it's a canopy, but this time it's the Phoenix instead of the heart. And so because, because it's so similar, I'm stitching it. Uh, one over one full cross, except this is on 25 count instead of 28 count. That's all I've got. <laughs> I haven't even cut this down to size, so I'm not going to open it all the way, but this is, this is all I've got. Um, I put in 100 stitches on the 100th day of the year. That's it, y'all. Um, it's it's at 0.3% finished. So, but yes, it's it's one over one full cross. Same with canopy heart, and will be beautiful in you know 15 years when I have it finished. Like, I don't even have 500 stitches in that thing. There's 427 stitches in it. That's it. That's all. Um, like, maybe if I had hoops and cue snaps and scroll rods for, like, every single project, it would be mentally easier for me to, like, switch out projects and then just work on them. However, that means I'm not getting significant progress on projects. It's like too spread out among all the different projects. So really my six week rotation thing is really like my limited active whips is a really good thing. And then I can throw in the other ones with like whip go or uh, other, other things like that, like the hundredth day of the year and stuff like that. That worked really well for the, like, two months that I started it, but... And then Mania happened, and I kind of fell off, and... This one is a Mill Hill kit. This was my first Mill Hill kit. It is Northern Lights Santa. Uh, I started this December 6th, 2022, and it does have beads. You could... This is, this is beads right here. What I can't tell is if he's collecting him or if he's putting them up in the sky. Like, which way is Santa doing it, okay? But look at his beard. Look at that. It is so fantastic. That was a lot of fun to, to, to do because I'd never done anything like that before. Um, I finished it very simply with some felt on the back and a ribbon. That's all 
all she wrote, folks. This was my first time beading with a tacky bob. And I loved the tacky bob. Definitely have used it since then and will continue to use it. So yeah, I've got the other, um, the Southern Cross and whatever the third one in that trio is. Eastern something? I can't remember. Eastern Star? Uh, I do have the other two as kits, um, but I haven't started or worked on them or anything like that. But this was so fun, and it's the only thing that I have fully finished. <laughs> Out of all my finishes, this is the only one. I started it and finished it and fully finished it. Proud moment right here. That brings us into 2023. Not bad, huh? So all of these are new starts this year. Um, seven. I have started seven things this year. And it's the end of May. Five months in. Okay, so first up, I have the reindeer which is the first one I'm taking on from the Year in the Woods series. This is um, number 12, but because it's the first in the trio of winter, I'm starting with it um, because I am stitching the seasons together on one piece of fabric. So I started with the reindeer. This is from Cottage Garden Sampling. I'm using all called for threads, including the white bean chalk, which I know a lot of people are just using uh, a white for that. I am, I don't know. I felt like being exact, I guess. So this is Gray Magic by Be Stitch Me. It's a 32 count in Lugana. And so it will have uh, the reindeer, the fox, and the swans on it. It is a great fabric. I really enjoy the Bestitch Me fabrics. Um, let's see here. I'm cutting off his little... So antlers are almost done. I've got like a little bit here and then like another little swirl here. But he's marvelous to stitch. He's my other travel project. Um, though I haven't I haven't taken him a lot lately. It's usually been well, for a while, it was whichever one I was finishing, like How Great Thou Art and um, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. Those ones became travel projects for a bit. And then the stamped kit. But otherwise, this is the one that goes with me when I'm, when I'm traveling. It, it fits in this um, pouch by Alara. my patterns right here so I'm covering it up oh and here is my um, whatever my travel thing I keep with my orts and my scissors in here so this is easy for me to pull out whenever I'm traveling um, whichever project is going with me but yeah this this fits in my purse perfectly. So I use it. I started that January 1st, 2023. Then 
I started, this is um, glaring at you. This is Snowshoe Hair, um, charted by Kaylee at the sewingshop.ca. The artist is Miriam Russo. And so when I'm finished stitching this, it's heading back to um, Kaylee. She sent me this project bag and the kit, which apparently I've crunched up. Uh, <laughs> okay, it looks a little messy. Don't, no worries. Don't worry about that. And she dyed this fabric. I got to choose what count, the 28 count, and then she dyed it. Look how amazing that is. I, I oriented it so the darker was down here on the bottom, and I think that was like the perfect choice. So this is what it's going to look like. It's, it's a little guy. Look at him. He's a favorite of people's. They love him so much. He's cute. This is like the darkness between the paws, I think his two paws in the front. But yeah, he is, all of up here is finished. I'm just working diagonally down, 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 down. He is um, 43.66%. 13,570 stitches done so far. Uh, so, I'm closing in on, on halfway done, but not quite there yet. Uh, he is definitely a focus because I do need to get him back to, to um, Kaylee. So he's going to come back into regular focus uh, in my vague plans that I'm still solidifying. In February, I started Green Hills by Riolis. This is my first Riolis kit. Um, they use wool acrylic threads. And this is the Shire. And it's beautiful. So their threads come on cards like this. Their pattern is large and lovely to read. And here we are. It's so cheery. I remember when I started this, um, I hadn't planned on starting it, but I think I just needed the colors in it. Um, in February, I would have still, this would have been like a month after I, um, crashed. <laughs> if you guys remember <laughs> the beginning of the year, it was rough. Um, and so by about a month, I was still like, I was barely eating normal or adequately. I was barely eating adequately a month after, um, that crash. And that was about when I started this. And the colors were so cheery, I loved it. But this did come out this month. Um, I did a lot more of this, some of this blue, but a lot of this green down here in this year's mania. Middle Earth mania is what I did this year in May. Um, so yeah, I started this February 13th. And that's how far I've gotten. And it really is, it's beautiful. The sky is just one color, but some of this is half cross and some of it is full cross and that's how you get the two shadings there. Down here you have a lot of blends going on. Um, 
it's beautiful. I love the blends for the grass because, or the greenery, because it gives like the shading and the depth uh, that you would see in person, in real life, like a, a grass outside. So, I, I do quite like this piece. I do quite like all the pieces. Um, okay. And then we come to my birthday. And my birthday was Home in the Mountains. This is a golden kite pattern. And it is of Rivendell. With the fellowship right here on the bridge. So I am doing the standard size, which is the largest size available, blended colors because I just, I wanted every single bit of detail possible on this piece. A lot of people who started this have started in this corner. Um, Alicia, I know, started in this corner. I do think that there was somebody who started in this corner, but I can't remember who. I started in this corner. It was so fun to do this with so many people. Um, I will say I still need to buy threads for this so I can properly show it off. But this is how I'm keeping track of my blends. Uh, there's way more blends than what I have right here because I'm only setting these up as I go. But um, these are thread blends by Adam. Heart, A-T-O-M, and she's got different colorways, but what I've done is I've written on then the color, and I do need to buy the color so I can put them here, but this is the blend. I so far have just pulled it from my master set, but I definitely need to buy the colors for it. But there's like 70 or 80 blends, so this is barely a fraction of it. So my fabric is 28 count. It is 2 over 1 tenth stitch. There's the entire thing. And here we are. Look how beautiful these colors are. They are so pretty. So, so pretty. And you can see... Where I've stitched. I know the last time I stitched, I was mostly down here. Because um, this did come out for Mania. Really, the only Lord of the Rings piece I have not stitched for Middle Earth Mania is Frodo, which is ridiculous because it's my oldest piece. It's six years old and I didn't stitch at all on it this month. But that's okay. That's okay. Um, 3,960 stitch, 66 stitches here. It's at 1.14%. And that's where it's at. It's so pretty. Yeah. Gorgeous colors. The confetti in that section is not too bad. Um, the left corner, because it's got trees and stuff, it's a lot of confetti. So, so says everybody who has started in that corner. So, if you're going to tackle this piece, but you're not quite wanting to face the confetti right away, maybe start in the upper right corner instead. It's an option. But if you don't care, start. If you are used to starting in the left corner, go for it. Obviously, you don't need my permission. None whatsoever. Okay. Then, I worked on this. I remember I worked on Home in the Mountains, um, and I wanted to get it to 1%. The day I reached 1%, it was, I kid you not, five minutes after I hit 1% on Rivendell, the mailman, it, mail lady, actually, um, mail carrier, she arrived at my mailbox and delivered the fabric I needed for my Middle Earth map. So yes, I absolutely started my Middle Earth map right away. 
Um, it felt like it was in meant to be. Like 1% on Rivendell and my fabric arrives for this one. So I did. I started it. This is the Middle Earth, the Realm of Middle Earth. That's what it's called. The Realm of Middle Earth. This is by Tilton Crafts. You cannot get this chart any longer. Um, there is, to my knowledge, as of right now, there is no licensed Middle Earth map available. So, that, I always get questions about where you can find a licensed one. You can't right now. Um, but this is the one from Tilton Crafts. I'm stitching this on 40 count. Four, zero. Um, so, adorable tiny little stitches. Um, but this has a larger stitch count than my bookshelf, and I just, anyway, the reason for the 40 count is because I, in my vision of my Lord of the Rings wall, I didn't want the map to overwhelm all my other pieces, and so 40 count, 40 count it is. I started, this is the very middle of the piece, if you can see that because I didn't want to count to the margins. Um, I just wanted to get it started right away. So I started in the middle and I'm gonna work on this, whatever quadrant that is, lower uh, right quadrant. So this is the forest of Fangorn. These are mountains and this is the O in Rohan. G-O-R is what that says. So that's what you've got so far. Um, I did find that one of my friction pens is little enough to where it works. So I can grit it. But it just barely works for 40 count. <laughs> um, yeah. But gritting it, gritting it helps a lot. Um, it helps the stitching on this one with such a tiny count to be working on. This is 2,689 stitches. It is at 0.34%. It's so fun. Look at how tiny. Look, that's my finger. Look, this is 2,000 stitches. It's so tiny like now you see it now you don't uh in here like all of this stuff like that is definitely more confetti than the so so I hear what I hear is that there's going to be sections like this that are going to be lots of confetti but then you've got lots of areas like all over here and and over here that really isn't going to be a lot of confetti. So anyway, here's Fangorn and Rohan right there. And the little mountains, that's that's where I'm at. So I will be doing this section. Yes, this section with Mordor. We'll be first. Wait. No. No, no, I'm lying to you. I'm doing this section. Yes, this is this is Gondor. So I'm going to be doing this section. And then I think I might be going up and doing this section, but you know, that's years and years away. So there is not at all a reason for me to think of it, but Yes, one over one tent stitch on 40 count. They are tiny and adorable, and I might be a little bit insane, but that's okay. I accept this kind of insanity, and I will keep doing it until I die. Well, 
theoretically until I die. I would rather be able to stitch up until I die. Um, I suppose if I lose my eyesight or my like brain capacity. Wow. Okay. I need to stop right now. This is, we don't need to get morbid. There's all the colors that the map uses. Alright, two more projects. This is, this is Alara's fault. Um, one to rule them all by Tilton Crafts. It's not a big piece at all. Um, I started this on the 23rd of March. I got home from dance class and started it. Like, why did I start something at 9.30 at night? I don't know, but I did. Um, and yesterday I finished all the black on this piece. So you can see it's very small. And all of this, like, you start in this corner and it's all black. So it was very easy to make the choice to just do all the black, which is the highest uh, stitch count for a color in this piece. Uh, so I did that. Word to the wise, there is like a single black stitch right there. So you have this chunk and then that chunk and this chunk and then one stitch right there. So if anybody else has been stitching all the black first, now you know about that one black stitch. Um... Yeah, so you can see that this is the ring, and this is actually the top part of the ring. Like, right there. You can see it's right there. Um, there is dark, but this is like two or three more colors at least. The next two largest colors in this piece are also dark colors. Like 3799, I think, and I don't something else. I don't know. I didn't look too closely. I was enjoying the fact that I finished an entire color. This is at 11.14%. Uh, That's how much the black was. 11%. This is really nice to work on because what I did was I outlined all of this and then I could just go in and fill it in super fast. Same with down here. Once I had all of this like outlined, I could just fill it in. And since they're tent stitches, I was doing like a hundred tent stitches in like 10 minutes because there was no counting involved any longer. One color, it was just like go. So that was super fun to be able to do. Uh, one of the colors that's over here, one of like the next color is a lot of over here, but it's a lot of dithering. I think that's what it's called where it's, it's like you have two or more colors like, but melded together, shading. Kind of, it's like this, but like in the whole section, basically. So there'll be a lot of counting, no block stitching whatsoever with that color. That's okay. It's like 4,000 stitches or something like that. Of that color. Oh, there is an artist. The artwork is by Eric Stein. Sorry, Eric. I forgot to mention you. But now he got his mention. Oh, that's, that's right side out. I should show you the back. Doesn't it look so different? <laughs> when it's just one color? It doesn't, yeah. That's not the piece that I should have shown you the back on. I should show you my bookshelf on the back. I'll do that after. 
after I show you this one. This is The Ranger by Matt Stewart. Um, Heaven and Earth Designs. Regular size, regular color. This is on 28 count. Um, two over one. And I started this with um, Chrissy, who had already started it, but had to restart it and she struggled with wanting to restart it because of how far into it that she was so I said that I'd start it with her and so we did that um, the 6th of May 2023 we started it together and I just have this this corner here um, 836 stitches at 0.33%. I'm really happy to have this piece started. Um, yeah, I like it. So how many Lord of the Rings pieces does that mean I have now? Five, six, Frodo. Green Hills, the Shire, Rivendell, the map, the rain, the ranger, six. And that's not all I've got to start because I still have Gandalf and I've got, um, there's one of the Hobbit hole and Bilbo is sitting in there with like his tea and snacks and it's, you're in the Hobbit hole looking out. I have, I have that one, that pattern. Those might be the only ones I have. Oh, it like I own already. So. But no plans to start them right now. I've got six on the go for my wall. That's good. Okay, before I forget, I will show you the back of my bookshelf. Because it looks really cool. It's like abstract art. Sorry, that's the front. That's the back. Um, yeah. And then the Shelf down here. It looks really cool. Very, very abstracty. Very cool. Okay. I need to roll this up again. Okay. So, like I said, 26 projects plus three fostered projects, bringing me to a total of 29 projects. Um, I would like to continuously see that number decrease. So I am okay with starting projects, but um, as long as my overall trend is to also be finishing projects. Um, yeah, yeah. My current, some of my current thoughts on where I'm going is snowshoe hair needs to be finished and when that one is finished I have a another project um, that needs to be finished by the end of the year that's not started yet uh, <laughs> so I will need, but I have it. It's all kitted up and ready to go. I just need to like do it. So when I finish snowshoe hair, I think I'm going to be starting that one. It's not, yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. And then, okay. So my limited whips right now. I have my bookshelf, which is 
my daily 600. <laughs> That's what we're gonna, we're gonna do it. Starting tomorrow, we're gonna get back into this. Daily 600. Um, unless I'm traveling, like, I just, we're doing this. And then my daily 30, which is 30 minutes, which is Woodland Enchantress. Then, if I still have stitchy time, after those two are done in a day, then I will have my like weekly rotation to work through. So, let me get my paper that says what this is. Okay. So the snowshoe hair is my um, like priority piece. And so that is getting worked every other week. It's possible that I'm just going to blitz it for June. Like it just may be the only one, the only priority one. And then if I need to work on a different piece, like every 10%, I'm, I switch focuses, then I pull in a whip go piece. That may actually be what I end up doing because for June, I actually really like this idea because I do need to get snowshoe hair done and I'd like to see that done. It's so close to 50%, which means if I, and I can do 10% in a week. So that means I can do the 10% in a week, and if there's more week left over, um, I can pull in one of my whip go pieces. Let me get that information too. Okay, whip go. I did January. I don't have like anything marked here. Let me get a pen. Hi, welcome to my floss tube where I am not all the way organized because I think of things after I start filming. Okay, so, okay, January was six and 10. And I, I did both of those. That was Pavan for these times. And I knew I wanted to get like the first like medallion thing finished. I did that. Um, the other one was Twisted Band Sampler. I wanted to finish the butterflies. I did some of that in January and some of it later on. But I did, I did it. February 7 and 11. All right, so that was Victorian Christmas, and I do remember, I remember working on that one, and Cirque du Curo. I did both of those. I remember because that was Victorian Christmas. That was where I worked on, like, the Hollies, and I remember getting all the, like, backstitching in. And then Cirque du Curo, I just remember that I got more of it in. I didn't do very much, but I did do more. Okay, good. I was right. January and February. The question is, did I do March? Or am I just making up that I did March? 22 and 2. Oh, good. I did both of these. So... Mayari and I did her halo. That was the one with all the beads in the halo. I did that. Um, that was when I went to my retreat, um, stitching in the springs. I remember this. The other piece for March was How Great Thou Art, which I did work on, and that one has now since been finished, so I need to replace that piece with something for its second slot in Whipgo. Probably, probably house plants because I know house plants isn't anywhere. So let me put that down. House plants. Um, 
All right, April, five and 17. And I know I haven't done these. Oh, that's funny. So it's Pavon for these times. So um, that's the one with the purple background with the gray um, thread. So that one. And then Cirque de Caro, which is the gray fabric with the um, variegated, like, um, teal purple floss. So both my silks for you floss. That's April. I haven't done either one of those. And May is 25 and 23. Which is Sabrina and Victorian Christmas bell pole. And June numbers. 4 and 16. June. Oh, Nomi's is 16, so clearly I'm not doing Nomi's. We're going to put that one as house plants. Because Nomi's is finished. That means I have Nomi's down here too. So if house plants, I just gave house plants two new spots. What do I do with the other spots? Do I give it... Maybe I'll just keep putting house plants on it because that'll be easy to kind of get finished up. I'd like to see it. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. House plants just got three spots. Okay, so Twisted Band Sampler and house plants. Yes. So I need to work on Twisted Band Sampler, Pavon for these times, House Plants, Cirque de Caro, Sabrina, and Victorian Christmas Bell Pole. Six with go pieces. I probably will not get all of that done in the month of June, but that's okay. I'm I'm not like super worried about it. Um, my goals for Whip Go are simply to get anything touched on those pieces. Um, once I pull it out, I do kind of like to set a get this part done. So we'll see. I'll pull something out and I'll make a decision on on how much I'm going to stitch on it before I officially call it done. Yeah. But let's see here. So my June plans is to give snowshoe hair the bookshelf, Woodland Enchantress, then snowshoe hair. And once snowshoe hair has reached whatever 10% mark it needs to, then I will pull out a whip go piece. That's how I'm going to work through it in June. I am um, traveling. Uh, not this upcoming weekend, but next weekend. And I will probably take something that doesn't, that is a paper pattern. I think two of my three. Hmm. I don't know what I'm going to take yet. We'll see. I might completely change my mind on what I take and not take any whip go piece but maybe I will. Anyway, I like to take something that's not electronic based when I'm traveling. Um, or I like to take something that's just like monochrome. So maybe something like Pavan would be great because even though I need to take my tablet and make sure that that's all charged and everything, um, it's just one color. It's very easy to transport. I might do that, that one or Cirque du Caro. Okay, then the other categories for my piece. I think I'm going to switch some of these out. Um, rabbit's my priority piece. I think I'm going to put in Frodo and Galadriel as my Lord of the Rings piece because I really, really 
want progress on that. So it needs to be in there somewhere. For specialty stitches, I'm going to keep the Summer Garden. That's the one by the drawn thread. That's my long and skinny piece tilted sideways. Um, for full coverage piece, I will put in Queen of the Night because that's another one that I want to see finished. Um, Non-full coverage is... Sabrina that one's gonna stay it's yeah because again that one's for a uh, comparison so yes and then close to a finish I don't actually know which piece is closest to a finish anymore because I'm not sure that any of them really are but that one is like week six so I have a long time before and technically week six is like week 11 right because it's going one two one three one four one five one six okay um so I'm not even worried about this because it'll be like August before I hit that um but I, I really don't know which piece is now closest to a finish. So I might just need to pick one and, and put that in it. Um, just, just, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, that's my plans. Um, over the next six months, okay, so until November when my two year anniversary will be, is um, my plans are just to keep stitching, to keep sharing this with all of you, to um, live life, to just embrace what's in front of me. Um, I'm in a very, very good and happy place right now. And... Sometimes something happens that's a surprise. And you find out that that surprise actually was very good for you. And allowed for other things to happen that are so good for you. And that you've never been happier you've never been more free, and you've never been wholly authentic. You've never slept better. Like, it's the healthiest you've ever been. It's so good. Um, but not really where I was expecting this would be. I would be at this point. So, um, yeah. Feel free to message me if you want to talk about what's going on. Um, or be in my Discord, um, where, where I talk more about that. That's my plan over the next six months. Um, retreats that I am scheduled for. I did get an invoice for StitchCon, y'all. Um, for StitchCon B. I did get an invoice, however... Um, because of some other changes in my life, I did not commit to it. So, maybe next year. Um, what else? I am going to Stitch West in October and Stitching in the Springs in November. I do know that there, somebody was suggesting some uh, the Needlework Galleria in September. I don't, I'm not signed up for that though. It's intriguing, but at the same time, like I said, there are other things happening in my life that kind of dictate some things. Hmm. Dictate my time a little bit and money. And that's okay. So, 
I'm trying to think of what else, what else is happening over the next six months that might affect my stitching. In July, I'm traveling out to California. My grandmother just turned 90 and um, this is my grandmother who was married to my grandfather who died a year and a half ago. She's, he was Samoan, she's Chinese, um, now she's 90 and this is a family reunion for my Chinese side of my family and it is just very important that I get out there and see her and then also be able to see all my other, you know, my cousins, my aunts and uncles, like whoever, whoever else happens to be there. Um, I know I have a sister who's going, so I know her family, oh, two sisters will be there at least. Um, so that'll be fun. That's in July. In August, I'm going to Cape Cod, um, Massachusetts. I don't think I've been to Cape Cod before, um, but instead, usually my, my mother, my oldest sister and her family, and Kaylin and I, we go to North Myrtle Beach in South Carolina. This year, my mother wanted to go to the New England area for lighthouses and stuff like that. And so that's what we're doing instead. We're not going down to North Myrtle Beach. We're going up to Cape Cod instead. So it'll be different, but um, should be good still. That's in August. Um, and then, yeah, Stitch West in Utah in October. And Stitching in the Springs in November. Stitching in the Springs is like my deadline for getting that third bookshelf done on Treasure Hunt Bookshelf. Um, so... It's the second weekend in November, so I actually have like an additional week that I could get it finished than I otherwise would have thought that I had. So anyway, um, I think that is all. I am, like I said, I'm doing really well. Kaylin is doing really well. Um, we had our dance recital this last weekend, and um, she was in uh, ballet, hip-hop, and lyrical. Um, lyrical is her favorite style, and it shows. She loves the other styles as well, but she is really good in lyrical. That dance was, her class did a phenomenal job. I was in a jazz and a tap number, and then there is always a number where mothers and daughters who are dancing in the studio, we do a number all together. And that one's always like a very sweet um, song and, you know, gets the audience all emotional and stuff. <laughs> so we, we also had that song. So, yeah, that, that I think is all that I can really say um like i said if you want to reach out um oh oh guys why am i why am i forgetting this this is a whip parade okay one and a half years on floss tube that means giveaway um two giveaways okay um i did not write down what it was that the question I wanted you guys to answer, I didn't write it down. So, here's what we're going to do. In your comments, um, give me a book recommendation. If you're not a reader, that's okay. Um, you can pick anything else that you would like to recommend to me if it's not a book, okay? Um, it can be any, like, just anything, any any genre, any whatever, just maybe it's your favorite book, maybe it is um, one that you think that I would really enjoy, it could be fiction or nonfiction, whatever. Um, it could be themed around... Um, like healing and trauma, which is something that we talk a lot about here. Uh, whatever. 
recommend to me a book. Um, it could be even an audiobook that you specifically like a narrator for. Doesn't matter. Leave me that comment. If you do, you will be entered to win. Um, I had I had a list of what it was that what this was going to be. Why is Suki not prepared for this? One moment. Okay, my first giveaway was charts from Heaven and Earth Design, and I got to look through the winner's wish lists and choose from that. That was fantastic. My second one was 123 Stitch, and I, again, got to choose from people's wish lists and, and pick. So I think I want to do that one again, is, is 123 Stitch. Um, because I love picking out for people. Now, the one thing with 123 Stitch is that um, I will need your email address so I can see your wish list, but then I will also need your mailing address because for some reason 123 Stitch does not like allow me to just hit send to the person whose wish list it's on. Like I also have to input all of that. So you need to be willing to give me both your email address and your mailing address if you win um, this giveaway. If you are in a country in which it doesn't make a lot of sense to do one, two, three stitch, um, we will work something else out. You know your country better than I do, so um, I will work with you if you are one of my international friends who um, who win. So don't be afraid to enter no matter where you are. We will figure it out. Okay. So enter with a book recommendation. If you are absolutely not a book person whatsoever, then literally recommend anything that you want in your life. Um, there will be two winners and yeah, so there will be that. I will announce them in a future video. I'm going to say in two weeks from now. Um, but I don't know what date that is. <laughs> so don't wait. Don't wait to enter. Just do it. Um, I can't believe I almost forgot that part. What? Actually, when I was preparing for it, it didn't even cross my mind to write it down, even though I knew it was a thing that I was going to do. <sighs> okay. I love you all very much. You mean the world to me. I am incredibly honored that you spend the time with me and allow me to like keep you company i am just blown away so much and uh yeah okay let me not get emotional while i like ooze my love out at you guys but there is no way that I would have gotten through the early part of this year without you. No way, no way at all. Um, it was hard, you saw it. You saw how hard it was. Um, but not only did you guys support me throughout all of that, like, with just so much outpouring of care and love and kindness, but like somehow me being in, going through all of that was good for you as well. Like that just blows my mind is that me in my need 
and reaching out for help from you guys like created this even stronger bond with you guys and you guys to each other. I love seeing this community just gather around anybody who needs it and say, you don't have to be alone. I'm here. So I am here. Um, my Instagram is the brown eyed stitcher. Reach out to me through DM there. Um, my email we're going to put right here on the screen, but we will also link it below. You can reach me via email. Uh, how else? YouTube comments, you can. If you're on Discord, that's a fantastic way of contacting me as well. Um, lots of, lots of, of ways. Um, I am also putting a, do we say it Kofi? Or coffee. I'm going to put that link here. Um, if you feel led to um, donate to this channel, um, like if I've brought some value to you, this is so awkward to say. Okay, if I've brought value to you through any of like my live streamings um, or the tutorials that I've done, uh, feel free. <laughs> To, this is so awkward to be putting out there. <laughs> you have a way to um, give back to me. I have received some requests. Um, and so a year and a half in, I figure it's kind of time for me to, to allow that for people. Um, that's so weird for me to say, though. Anyway, I love you. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Thank you for hanging out with me. I feel like if I just managed to talk for like 12 more minutes, we could round this out to a nice like three hour long video. But at the same time, um, I don't have anything else to talk about right now. So um, I'm not going to. I'm just going to release you back to the world of other floss tape videos. Um, I don't know. Mwah. I love you. I'll see you next time. Bye.